See, Proxmox is one of the first words that you're most likely to hear when you get started in your home lab journey. It's free, it's pretty good, and it's very, very beginner friendly. Now today, I wanted to give you a bit of an intro into Proxmox and kind of guide you through the installation process, the post-installation process, and kind of how to set up a VM, especially Windows, because it's a little bit more nuanced than just setting up a VM. Now, Proxmox is where my whole home lab journey started, and I absolutely love it, but unfortunately, it has one flaw which I just cannot ignore, especially the way I want to set up my VMs. Now, this is part two of an unofficial guide on how to get started in your home lab. In part one, we talked about the mini PCs that I use and kind of what you should look out for when you're buying yourself one. And then in the next part, we are gonna talk about my favorite operating system that is TrueNAS, so stay tuned, because you might be thinking, hold on, VMs in TrueNAS? But yes, that is absolutely what I use to host my VMs. So stay tuned and make sure you subscribe. Now, there is another player in the game called Unraid, and Unraid is really really good and i've got loads of people commenting saying you should try unread you should do this i have used unread but to be honest with you i never got on with it so i never delved into it further so i don't feel comfortable enough making a guide on unread when i don't really understand it myself now we're going to start off with an installation process and to be honest with you the installation process is pretty straightforward we're literally just going to download the iso put it onto a usb stick via rufus or balena etcher or we are gonna use Ventoid, which is my preferred method because I can just have multiple ISOs on a USB stick. And I'll show you how to set it up. But to be honest with you, it's idiot proof, which is why I've really enjoyed using it. Now I'm gonna install it on this little mini PC, which is the Ace Magician AM06 Pro. So let's get started. Now you're gonna need a USB stick of some sort. So I usually recommend 16 gig or higher because obviously that's where you are gonna put the ISO on. And then obviously you wanna head over to the Proxmox website, click on downloads, and then obviously download the Proxmox VE 8.4 ISO, but this is obviously the latest version as of the time of recording this video. So once you've downloaded it, you've got a few ways of flashing it onto a USB. You can use something called Rufus, and this is something I highly recommend because you just plug the USB in, select the ISO, and it will go ahead and do everything for you, and it creates bootable USBs, as you can see here. The alternative is you use Balena Etcher. So if you don't have a Windows computer, you use Balena Etcher because it's cross-compatible on Linux and Mac OS, or the way I'm gonna be installing installing it is with Ventoy. And Ventoy is a bit more advanced because it allows me to have multiple ISOs on a USB stick and I can boot from any of them and it will look something like this. So I'm now in front of my monitor and I've got the little device connected here and we're now gonna power it up. And the first thing we need to do as always is boot into the BIOS. So we're in a BIOS now and I've gone across to boot override because all I wanna do is boot from the SSD once from the Ventoy SSD. This is what Ventoy looks like. So I just need to find Proxmox. Now, obviously, if you're booting from a standard USB, which you've created with Rufus or Balena Etcher, you wouldn't see those options, but you still have to go into the BIOS and make sure you boot off that USB stick. And here we are, we're gonna boot into the graphical installer. Now, make sure that the box that you're installing Proxmox on is connected to the internet. Now, most likely you would wanna use ethernet because it's gonna be a lot more stable than using it over Wi-Fi. Now, here's where you select your hard drive. So I'm gonna select my SSD and I'm gonna click OK. And I'm gonna tab my way through to next. Now, here is obviously where you select your time zone. This here, is where you set your password. Now make sure it's super secure. We're gonna hit next. Now here's where you configure your IP addresses. This is quite important because you wanna remember where your Proxmox server is on what IP address. Now I'm gonna show you how to get into it later but you can give it a host name. So that's just an easier way of kind of finding it on the system. Now I just leave it with pve.lan, that's simple enough for me. Now the IP address you wanna set it as. Now I'm gonna put it on 90 because I know that's outside my DHCP range. Now if you want me to do a whole video on the DHCP ranges and how to kind of configure your home network, let me know. The default gateway I leave it on dot one and the DNS server is also handled by my router. And we're gonna hit next. And here just gives you a bit of an overview and I'm just gonna hit install and just let it do its thing. So once you've installed Proxmox successfully, you should be presented with a screen like this. Now this is exactly where we want to be. We do not need to do anything, but the one thing we need to remember is this IP address right at the top. And it says 10.0.40.90, obviously that's what we've set. You might have set 192.168.1. whatever. And then colon 8006, this is something that we need to remember because otherwise we won't get into the Proxmox VE environment. So you now need to launch your browsers, that's Chrome or Edge or whatever you're using. So you now wanna head to 10.0.40.90 and then you need to put colon 8006 and that essentially just means port. Want to hit enter, you'll get brought to this site and here we are in the Proxmox environment. So here's where you enter username and that is root and then the password is the one you have set during the installation. And we are get 
presented with this pesky no valid subscription screen. Don't worry, we're gonna get rid of all of this because now it's time to set up Proxmox the way we want to use it. Now, in order for us to do this, we are gonna use something called Proxmox Helper Scripts. Now, as amazing as Proxmox Helper Scripts are, there is unfortunately a bit of a sad story behind this. And this is why you can see two links when you type in Proxmox Helper Scripts on Google. There is the first link and then there's the second one. And I wanna focus on the second one because as far as I'm aware, the person who created this is unfortunately dead. And this is why you get this first result here, which is essentially somebody's picked it up and kind of maintained it. As I said, really, really sad story because the scripts are absolutely incredible and have helped the Proxmox community massively. So I'm really glad to see that someone else is picking it up. Now, since the original version, this has now advanced. We now have 300 plus scripts as opposed to the 199 script here. But on to more positive things, let me show you how amazing they are because the work that this guy has done is just incredible. Now, I tend to just copy and paste random scripts off the internet. Now, obviously, please don't do that. I'm joking, obviously, but these scripts are vetted, they are well trusted, and they are genuinely amazing. You can go on to GitHub and obviously see them for yourself. But one of the first ones I like to run is this Proxmox VE post install script because that just really configures Proxmox the way we need to use it. And you literally just open it and then at the bottom, it just asks you to copy and paste this script in. So if I look on Proxmox here, I'm gonna click on PVE, then it's gonna say shell. And here I'm just gonna paste it in and press enter. And I'm just gonna work my way through. So do you wanna start this? Yes, and you get presented with a nice GUI we can see here. So it's gonna ask me to correct all the sources and I generally just click yes and work my way through on this. There's nothing really that needs changing manually. Everything is more or less pre-configured. This is the first script that we are gonna run now. There is a second one as well, which I'm gonna show you shortly once this is up and running. Now, whilst this is up and running, let me show you the second script that we're gonna be using and it is called Prox Menu. And again, it is an open source script, which is absolutely incredible because it gives you a nice graphical user interface. And it also shows you if you click through on the website as to what you can do with it. So you can install some system utilities such as iPath, so that's for doing speed tests, HTOP, anything like that. But what it also does, and this is absolutely incredible, and this is kind of what I touched on right at the beginning, is the virtualization settings. And as it says here, it enables IO MMU groups. Now, I wouldn't worry too much about this, but essentially what this does is it potentially, and I'm gonna use the word potentially, allows you to pass through a GPU to your VM. I know I just said a load of words, but essentially what this allows you to do is to configure your virtual machine to see the graphics card. So if you wanna run Windows, for example, but you need a graphics card, this is something that this will hopefully potentially enable you to do that so you can see all the info here it also installs guest agents which is just a nicer way for the vm to interact with proxmox the first helper script has finished now it's asking me to reboot i'm going to say no for the time being because now i'm going to go back to the prox menu x script and i'm going to copy that script again and I'm gonna paste it in here and I'm gonna press enter. And I'm gonna work my way through the installation. Do I wanna proceed with the installation? Yes, please. And it will just go ahead and install everything that we need. And that's it pretty much done. And you can see right at the bottom, it says to run prox menu X, simply execute this command. And we just need to type in menu, press enter. And there we go. We are now in the prox menu X. And here's where we can do a lot of stuff. Now the first one is very similar to the script that we've just ran. And here you can go ahead and configure the bits. Now, I'm not gonna go through every option because it is a very long, but I just wanted to show you that this is available here. So for example, I'm gonna enable fast reboots, synchronize the time, skip download in additional languages, increase system limits, install kernel headers, and at the bottom, I'm gonna enable VFIO IO MMU support. And essentially, this is the virtualization part that I was talking about. And as you can see, it has a lot of extra features, but I'm gonna pretty much leave it on what I've got it on here, and it'll go ahead and install everything for me. And again, I absolutely love this script. Now, this is something that I came across a bit more recently, so I don't know too much about it, but by all means, go ahead, test it out for yourself. So everything's now installed, and I've rebooted the system, and I've also gonna ahead and installed NeoFetch because I'm fancy like that. What I now wanna show you is where these helper scripts come in and why they are so amazing. So if you take a look at the website here, we can scroll down and we can look through operating systems here if we open this as well as containers and Docker. Now, if you've always wanted to try Linux, this is the perfect way to get started in my opinion. So for example, if I wanted to set up Debian 12 in a VM, I can just click on it, or the same with Ubuntu 2504. I literally just copy the script, go back into Proxmox, 
paste it in, press enter, and it will ask me through and how I want it configured. So do I wanna use default settings or do I wanna have more advanced control over things? I'm just gonna use the advanced settings. It's gonna ask me for my VM ID, that's just a number. Now here, what do I wanna use? I'm gonna stick with the defaults. Here it's gonna ask me for space, I'm gonna give it 64 gig. I wanna use a write through, press okay, call it Ubuntu because that's enough for me. And I'm gonna select host, give it four CPU cores because that's how many cores you can give it. So obviously if you've got a CPU that only has four cores, you can't give it six, eight, one, nine, two. So eight gig of RAM, press okay. VM bridge is fine, MAC address is fine, VLAN's fine. I'm gonna leave all of this as is and I'm gonna press start VM after creation. And it's gonna go ahead, it's gonna download Ubuntu for me. So I don't need to go ahead and find anything like that. It will set up everything for me. And also I can see the MAC address of the device. I can see everything that the script is doing for me. So it's just going ahead and creating that VM. And if on the left hand side, I click on PVE on the drop down menu, I can see the Ubuntu VM there. And there we go. The Ubuntu VM has been essentially configured and it is ready to go. So just to give you a bit of an overview, if you click on the VM and then click on summary, you can see how much CPU is being used, how much memory is being used, the size of the disk that you've obviously given it. And you can just see whether it's running or not running and all this sort of stuff. You can also click through hardware and see kind of a bit more details. Now the final piece of the puzzle, and because this is a little bit more complicated, I left Windows 11 to the end. It is a little bit more involved as opposed to just copying and pasting a script because you need something called VAT IO drivers. And then it's a specific kind of way of setting up Windows 11. Luckily, Proxmox has a guide for us. Now, obviously, first thing you're gonna need is the Windows 11 ISO. I think that goes without saying. Then if you go over to Proxmox on their wiki, you can also get the VAT IO drivers. Just literally just Google Windows VAT IO drivers. And if you scroll down to download the latest stable under installation, you can download the ISO as well because we're gonna need that to get Windows 11 up and running. Now there is also a page here for Windows 11 guest best practices and guest just means you're running this as a VM and it walks you through how to kind of configure it, how to get it all set up and up and running. Now before we get started, we need to actually upload both the ISO and the VAT IO drivers. So on the left hand side where you click on PVE, you then wanna click on local PVE and then ISO images and here is where you're gonna to have to upload them. In my case, it's on my NAS under ISOs and here we have Windows 11. I'm gonna click upload and wait for that to upload. And there we go, that's it uploaded and you know that when it says task okay. Then we're gonna click upload again. I'm gonna select the file and this time we wanna upload the VAT IO drivers and I'm gonna upload it again. Now this file is a little bit smaller. I think it's like seven or 800 meg. So top right hand corner, we're gonna click create VM. Here we're gonna call it Windows 11. Now on the ISO, here's where you have to select your Windows 11 ISO and under guest, we're gonna to have to click Windows 11. Here under version, we just leave the top one. Now here is where the VAT IO drivers come in. We're gonna click add additional VAT IO drivers. And here's where you obviously select the VAT IO drivers that you've just uploaded. Then we're gonna click next. Now here it's gonna ask us for EFI because Windows needs EFI storage. I'm just gonna select the default and I'm gonna do the same for TPM. Now if you head back to the Windows 11 guest press practices, it actually walks you through how to set up your hard disk. So for example, it says use VAT IO SCSI. VAT IO SCSI is what we wanna select. Then it also says set a right back as cache option for best performance and then tick discard. So this is what we wanna do. So if we click next, here is where we wanna tick discard and under cache is a right back. Now space wise, I'm gonna give it 128 gig. Now on the CPUs, socket means you have multiple sockets available. So sometimes you get dual socket motherboard. Now in my case, I'm gonna give it four cores, that's enough. Now under type, I find that it works best with host. Now you can leave it on the default, but I find that working with host is best. I'm gonna click next, memory wise, Windows likes memory, so I'm gonna give it eight gig for the time being. And here I'm gonna leave everything as is, and I'm gonna click next. Now here you get a bit of an overview and I'm gonna tick the box that says start after created. So we're gonna give it a second, let it configure, and here we can see Windows 11 on the left-hand side, and we also get status running. So I can double click it. It will also say press any key to boot from CD, DVD. Make sure you do that, because otherwise it will just go into a network boot loop. Now, if you don't manage to hit it, like myself, because if I go into it here, you can see that it's starting pixie boot now. You can close it, and what I tend to do is I tend to shut it down, and there we go, it's now shut down. 
So the easier way to do this is to double click into the VM. It will then say start now, give it a second. And the second it loads, I just hit the space bar here. And this should hopefully take me into the Windows installer. And there we go, we've got it now. So if you start the VM, just be prepared to be quick to try and get into the Windows installer. Now here, it's pretty straightforward, standard Windows installation. It's asking you for the version. I just tend to go for Pro. So what you're most likely going to encounter during the Windows 11 installation is this problem here, which says no disks. Here, you're going to have to click load drivers then click on browse and then navigate to the virt.io windows 11 iso that you've added and this is why we've added it now right at the top you're going to select amd64 click on windows 11 click ok and this will then find the scuzzy driver here that you're going to need we're going to click install and there we go it's now found the disk so here's where you can then click next and it will go ahead and install it on that 128 gig ssd and then we're just going to hit install and just wait for windows 11 to install it's basically it so I'm going to get back to you once Windows 11 is installed because there's one more thing we need to do once we're in Windows 11. It's never just straightforward with Windows, is it? What you might encounter here is it says no network drivers found. And this is kind of again why we've added that virt IO ISO. So you're going to have to click on install drivers. Then you're going to have to navigate to the virt IO section again. Click on net KVM. Go all the way to the bottom where it says Windows 11, AMD 64, and it's going to not show you anything. You're just going to click select folder. It will then go ahead and search for the new drivers, and then it will go ahead and find them and install them essentially. So then you're going to have a network connection. I'm not going to reboot the device, but essentially once it installs the network drivers, you're going to have to reboot it. So as I said, Windows 11, unfortunately, isn't as straightforward as you'd like it to be and as simple as you'd like it to be just because there are just many more nuances, and this is why I kind of left it to the end and I want it to be a little bit more detailed about it. So now that we set up Windows, the final piece of the puzzle is to install the VAT IO drivers completely. So they should show up when you go on this PC and then they are going to be here as a drive essentially. You're going to scroll all the way to the bottom and it will say VAT IO Win GTX 64. I'm just going to double click it and just going to work our way through the installation and that should give you essentially a fully working windows installation and there we go that's now installed now i also like to install the guest tools i don't know if it's necessary but i just kind of do it anyway and this should now make windows a little bit more usable so that should now give you a fully working windows 11 configuration so hopefully you understand a little bit more about proxmox now it is a lot to learn there's loads to cover but the kind of the fundamentals is what i wanted to touch on and also use the helper scripts because they are absolutely incredible in getting all of this up and running now if you've enjoyed it don't forget to like and follow and leave a comment as to what else you want me to cover because I'll be covering TrueNAS next week where I'll be going a little bit more in depth in TrueNAS and why I think it's the perfect operating system for my needs. Now this isn't specific to you but I just want to cover why I really like it and we're going to be looking at a slightly different PC that I mentioned in my previous video. So if you haven't seen part zero or part one go and watch that first. I have it linked down below and also I should have it in a pop-up here. But once again thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.